Yes, we do. Of course, we've got the National Hunt Chase. So um, there's a couple of us very much in Church, don't worry. Sorry, in Guy de Menil's camp. And then there's a lay going up with that horse as well, which, frankly, I, I cannot see. Dan Overall, you now just talk some sense into Michal DC. Look him in the eye and, and make the man see <laughs> sense. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. Um, look, I backed Marlon Mission a, a while ago before he lost to Churchdown Warriors. So, like, if anyone's got a reason to think Gaia de Manil is beatable, it would be me. But I just don't see what there is to not, not like about him. I think staying in particular, I think average punt. And I, if, I, if I could out there. Yeah, you did briefly. Are you back? This gives me a chance, actually, while yeah, we yeah. try and sort you out. To remind everyone that Anurga Men won the champion chase last year. I'm having an absolute shocker today, so that's fine. Go on, Dan, come back in. <laughs> yeah, I'm back, yeah. <laughs> it's not your day, is it, Tom? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. Give up. Go on. <laughs> well, no, I just think he's got a clear class edge in this race. I don't think anything else in this would be capable of even winning a poor grade one novice chase over three miles. He's got stamina that we know from his performance in the Irish National, experience in abundance. So even if this is a traditional <coughs> national hunt chase and the fact that it was a strongly run one, I don't think that'll inconvenience him. If it's slowly run, he's proven he's got enough speed to be able to cope with those tests, especially more than likes of Marla Mission or a Churchtown Warrior. I just think he's head and shoulders above these in terms of what he's achieved and what he's capable of. And yeah, I struggled to really see anything to take him on with. Yeah, so this is the thing, Matt. So... I remember, you know, you and I doing previews six, seven, eight years ago where it was always, even when this was four miles, you've got to have experience. But, yeah. I mean, this horse ticks that box, right? So, I'm, just, I'm surprised you haven't gone with him. I thought he'd be a classic tomb selection, to be honest. I think he would have been when you were getting 15 to 20 runners in this. You had a few amateur, genuine amateur riders. They were going a decent gallop and jumping amongst horses. Being battle-hardened was really important. We had half a dozen last year. And they hacked round. Um, five of them were in a heat, four out. So on that basis, I think we'll get a few more this year, maybe eight, nine, ten, something like that. But perhaps the experience isn't so important now. Right. So okay, fine. So so g give us the give us the stat out and out, and then tell me why you like Churchstone Warrior. So the stat was that horses that run in eight or more chases are six from 36, 58 percent profit uh, level weights. And in theory, that points straight to Gaylord de Manil, but I wanted to point out how the, the race is potentially changing because when you're looking at stats, that's always important. Churchstow Moray was seven and a half lengths behind him in that grade one at Leopardstown at Christmas, but Churchstow Moray had only run in a couple of beginner's chases. Gaylord de Manil was having his seventh chase, his fourth grade one, big experience advantage. Churchstown Warrior went down the inner and the worst of the ground, since beaten Marlon Mission in the 10 up. He's not really got into a rhythm in either of those races. He does jump a little bit to his right, which is not ideal, but the soft offences at Cheltenham should help. And if he gets into a rhythm going the steadier pace over these easy offences, I think he's the one with the improvement in him. And also in price terms, on the sports books, he's about 8.0 top price. I think he's about 13.5 on the exchange. So they're, they're, you're getting a real a big bunch of extra price here. Um, so, yeah, if you fancy him, definitely back him on the exchange. If you're going to, if you're going to back him on the exchange, DC. Yeah, so first of all, too short. 2.2, .2, way too short. Um, this is a, this is a marathon race. They have to jump loads of fences. It's very hard to win when he's only won one chase in eight attempts. Um, fair enough, he's... The, the class edge, but he's he's too short in this. Um, definitely have to take in mind. This is a pure slog of a race, especially if it's going to be heavy ground. Like I, I just I I, I wouldn't be backing him at all at that price. And if and he's he's like he's he's a cheap lay, I think so. I'll um, I'll be I'll definitely be taking him on but uh, at a uh, at two point two or even if Willie has a few winners in the first day, he'd be going off at one point eight or one point nine. Yeah, lay all day, good man, Liam. I'm not even reading that out, Liam. You're a disgrace. That's just an appalling. Well, he's, he's, he's like, look at his, it shows his farm is 3 3 2 1 3. Like, he's just very hard to win with. No. Yeah, in grade ones and Irish nationals. Yeah. Eight's winning. <laughs> Steve. I'm liking Liam because he's got a similar haircut to me and these. <laughs> um, 
I think, yeah, I think the favourite is too short. I mean, he's, you can see him running his race, can't he? Because he stays and he's got experience and uh, he's uh, got some good form. But I thought Tenzing was going to improve an awful lot going up three quarters of a mile in distance. And his run behind a couple of these Ramillies, uh, he wasn't beaten far by it, Thurlis. And then uh, he was beaten last time uh, by Marla Mission at Navan over three miles. Uh, when he, he, he lined up, prominent and he just couldn't hold his place and uh came stayed the distance really well and i think he's going to improve a huge amount he's got black lion uh the real stayer of um the rsa winner from a few years ago of nigel twist davis is when he had stacks of stamina so the pedigree says he should stay he likes uh soft ground and uh i think he is going to improve an awful lot so if he turns up because he's He's probably the third um, biggest price of Willie Mullins' is three. Uh, I think he, he'd be the way to go at uh, winning place. Uh, I think he's, what, 26 to 